Okay, so we got two light fixtures that two light fixtures that were taken from a job because they don't work anymore. Now they made these lantern style LEDs for a short while. I think they quit making them because they're burning out. Um, you might be able to find them in other states, but they basically have no bulb to replace. It's just a basic light fixture that's a lantern style, and they both match. And I hate to throw them in the garbage. And with this economy the way that it is, and probably going to force us into a collapse, um, you know, I can't keep this junk hanging around, but I need to find something useful to boost the value of my property or rental property. So what do I do with these things? How do I get them to work? Well, I, I came across some old light fixtures. These are single socket, uh, single socket light fixtures that I pulled from a closet or several closets a while back and held on to and it's just junk collecting that I can't keep so what do I do I, I pulled the sockets out of them because the old the older ones or even some of the new ones have clip-in sockets like that right and it's a plastic socket but if I'm using a LED bulb in it what difference does it make it doesn't get that hot so I was thinking maybe what we could do here in this video today is just insert this socket in here and, turn, and have us a lantern style fixture. I mean, I don't see any reason why. So we, you're back converting. <laughs> yeah, I'm converting it back to a conventional fixture. First thing I got to do is get rid of this ballast uh, for the LED. And we'll do that probably with a number one Phillips. Uh, number one is smaller than your average Phillips. It's one size smaller. Number two is most common, in case you didn't know that. So we can pull the screws to this ballast and see what we got in here. Okay, so far it looks like we got a bunch of junk. Threaded in. Yeah, we do. It is threaded in. It's we would have to fish wires through that. Let's try removing the light fixture itself, the light bulb itself, or the LED bulb itself, and see what that makes up. Okay, so what do we got here? Looks like some wires. Fish well, through. Okay, so we got a plate then. We got a plate that we can use to mount something to, correct? Right. So let's see how much depth we have underneath this. Let's see if we have room to actually stick a a socket in here. Ultra short screws? No, I mean to recess the socket. We could always surface mount the socket. But let's see if we can recess it in this plate of aluminum. Looks like this fixture came with a plate of aluminum. So let's save our screws. There's our plate. We have any room to recess? It looks like we do. Oh, Ooh, yes. yes. Plenty of room to recess. So we keep these screws to the side, right? Let's... Okay. How's about we don't do this? Let's see. No, we can. Okay. We can cut these wires. So. A pair of wire snips are probably more suitable for this job, but... The knife works. Now, let's take our flat plate out. Okay, now we got a flat plate here. You think maybe we could put it on here and trace it? Probably could. Oh yeah, look at that. Trace that, try to center it, and then trace it. Now what if we trace it and cut it out? Drill it out. Alright, that's the plate itself. So now we had that, and we had that. Alright, first things first is we gotta hold this thing down. So we're gonna use screw holes to our advantage. Okay. Let's keep it from spinning. Next we're gonna get something that's called a step bit. And this if you're in the electrician section down the electrician's aisle, this is what they use to drill holes through electrical panels for different sizes. Each step represents a different size hole. And you can buy these at Home Depot, Harbor Freight, any one of your local places. And they're good for thin sheet metal and thin uh, sheet aluminum, but nothing really thicker than that. Here, 
and cut here. And you can hammer that back flat with a hammer. Right. You know the purpose of this, right? Yeah, that's for the uh, tabs. Yeah, but this doesn't just latch the fixture in. It stops you from screwing the fixture when you're trying to screw the bulb in. Oh, yeah, and rotating the socket. Yeah, it's a definitely. rotate lock. All right, so we ran our step bit one more time, and it came out real tight still. Still not where I want it, but close. Wait, take that back. Let's see, what do we have? Okay, look at that. Oh yeah, that is a very <laughs> tight socket. Wonderful. Looks like that one locked in. Yep, and the plastic ain't bad. I can bend straight. Yeah, you can bend that by hand. <laughs> Look at that. Looks like we converted it back to a socket. I haven't gotten to yet. I was just thinking maybe I could go through here. Come out of here like this. You would take and you would stagger these kind of something like that, right? Just going through a very tight space. So you would tape those together and you would tape this one together to here. Strip this back. to make a hook. Oh yeah. Like on Romex. Right. When you fish in Romex, you'll make a hook like this. A hook here and a hook here when you're fishing. Okay? Then you'll take your electrical tape and you'll tape that up. So we'll pause that, get some electrical tape and get this job done. Okay. You want to tape your second wire a little bit lower down because you don't want all these three to join in the same place. It makes too fat of a connection to pull through. All right, this might be a little difficult if it makes it because it had real thin wires through here before. See it trying to go through? And there's also a plastic grommet on there to stop the pipe, from, the union or the pipe from cutting, from cutting your wire. So you also have that issue. It's just pulling through little by little. Well, it takes one hand to pull, one hand to push, or at least prop up to get straight. Then you have this electrical tape that tries to come off in your hand. But if you get it the majority of the way through, you can get this electrical tape off, then it's problem solved, if you can get to that point. Strips the jacket. There we go. Okay. You try to put this socket in place. Can you see in there? Yes. You see how that's going to fall? All uh -huh. right, like that? Yep. Look. Right in the same screw hole. Right, even though they waddled out a little bit from all the work we did, they're still good. Now we got to get a screw started. How do we do that? Hmm. Let's take our number one. Let's find out which screw we use, which I think is these, these fatter ones right here. Yeah. Looks like number one comes up a little short. What does number two feel like? Number two feels better. Ah, so we're number two. Just small. Number two on the outer, number one on the inner to get the, the bulb out. So if we can get this down in place, we would take a piece of electrical tape, put it over the head of the screwdriver, and then press it on. And it would make a tight fit, and it would allow us to work upside down if we had to, or pointing downward without the screw falling out. In other words, a cheat to hold the screw to the screwdriver tip. Okay, tight, and tight here, and it looks like we actually made or converted back to conventional style, or conventional style fixture. 
and we don't need this. Let's see how we fared out. Um, there's our lantern style lanterns that we converted to LED. So we wired them up real quick. Uh, we did it the legal way. Anyway, so that, that's what you get. Providing so we, a lot more light around here. So what we have is a usable fix, fixture, right? Right. Alright, thank you all for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Next, we're going to probably tackle a Lazy Susan and tell you, show you how to figure out how to change it from a Lazy Susan to a double cabinet or a double opening door. A non-lazy. Yeah, uh, a non-lazy Susan.